I'm going to show you an example of uh, the type of web map applications that we have with uh, UNHCR to, to show you a bit the type of usage of maps that can occur in humanitarian settings. So to start off with, um, if you just type UNHCR and maps in Google or whatever search bar you have, and you go to maps.unhcr.org, the UNHCR map portal, of uh, which we maintain the infrastructure, and you then go to geoservices. The second web map is the one called UNHCR Camp Mapping. And so these are uh, some of the web maps uh, based on a number of refugee camps in the world. And if we, for example, go to the Embera one in Mauritania, uh, so what happened here is that we we did an extensive camp mapping exercise where all the individual shelters of the camp and all the infrastructure such as the latrines, the water points, um, all the administrative entities of the camp um, and uh, anything that was useful in terms of services for the refugees was mapped out. And so you can see when you click on any entity, you've got information on whether it's operational or not, whether it's the wall material, etc., etc., or the information on the, the shelters, if they're operational or not. So all this was collected with Collector for, for ArcGIS, and um, the phones with the apps were left in country so that the data could be maintained over time. And what's particularly interesting are some of the analyses that are made available. So if you go to the analysis tab, let me just reduce a little bit the base map opacity so that we can see clearly. And you go to analysis, you can, for example, show uh, buffers around all of the latrines to see how well covered the camp is based on the data that's been mapped out. So in blue, we saw we see all of the shelters or all of the areas that are well covered based on the official UNHCR indicator of 50 meters around each uh, latrine. In other words, each shelter should be in a range of 50 meters of a latrine. And here highlighted in red, we actually see the shelters who are not in uh, those 50 meters and therefore are not well covered um, in terms of access to latrines. So this is a first example of a web application uh, that can help support um, UNHCR and its implementing, part uh, implementing partners in the field to better manage the camp. So the second example uh, that I wanted to focus on is also a UNHCR partner type example, but this time not linked to high quality precision uh, collection of infrastructure data, but more the mapping out of survey results. So what we do uh, with in all normally refugee settings every year is what we call uh, water sanitation and hygiene knowledge, attitude and practices survey, which help understand the water access that refugee uh, that refugees have. So more specifically, what is their understanding of good practices to avoid uh, certain illnesses such as diarrhea for children under five years old, or what water quantity they actually have accessible per person per day, to see if the basic standards are respected, etc., etc. So here you have an extract of the survey where first we know, okay, who, who responded to the survey, what was the age category, how many people slept in the house, how many children there were. So you see there are different types of questions. Are there people with disabilities? And then we get to the more technical questions, which is what's the principal source of domestic water, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that help calculate all of those indicators. And we're also able to know, based on the number of containers and the number of times they went to the water point 
each day as well as their total size, uh, how much water the household has overall on average and also how many, uh, how much water they have per person. So all of the, the questions on hygiene, when people wash their hands, uh, when people go to defecate, what type of toilets they have, etc, etc. And here at the end, um, we have a question on whether they accept that we take a GPS location as it can be considered as personal information. And then they just have a, a GPS type question where they can just take the, the GPS point. Right now I'm indoors, so it's uh, not as quick as if I was in the field. Here we see that we have a precision of 20 meters. The app automatically takes the position when it's more around three to five meters that I can, I can say, okay, 17 meters is acceptable for me, fill it in, and then I get to the end of my survey, I save it. And as soon, I can work offline for as long as I want. And as soon as I get an internet connection, so uh, the different NGOs would go back to their offices in the evening and connect to the internet because there's very little internet in the camp. Um, they would just save and send and we were we would be back checking the data as it arrived uh, on the website to be able to try and infer interesting aspects uh, for the next day. We would make sure that we would get together all of the survey managers and enumerators every morning and identify weak teams that we'd actually been able to see through the data so that then they were uh, specifically briefed and we could accompany them to improve the, the way they were managing uh, the survey. So now that you've seen the mobile side of the data collection, let's have a look at what the results can look like on a map. So if this time you type UNHCR and WASH, WASH means water, sanitation and hygiene in your favorite search bar, and you click on the first link, UNHCR WASH Manual and Resources at wash.unhcr.org. I'll switch to English. And this time go to Monitoring System and WASHCAP Mapper. So this is actually the tool to help map out the results of a WASHCAP survey, specifically focused on the key indicators that UNHCR has as a standard uh, across all countries. So the data collection that occurred on the mobile is charged on a website uh, that's used a lot in the humanitarian sector that's called um, Kobo. And you can export the data from this website in CSV format and then re-import it here into the tool. So here I have my data set that I open and this, uh, I just select the name of the camp and now I can zoom in to whichever area I wish for and I was telling you earlier that we did the survey for, for 500, on 500 households so a sampling of the whole Rohingya area and all I need to do now is choose whatever indicator I'm interested in to map it out. So I can see, for example, the number of households that have at least 10 litre per person per day of water storage capacity available and see its spatial representation and click on any specific dot to see what is the exact uh, litre of water per person per day and how many people there are in the household, how many children. And then I can also, for example, look at which are the households that have access to soap. And we see in the results that there is a spatial dimension to this, these results that will be interesting to analyse. So perhaps soap is more available in one area than another because refugees have arrived at a different moment and the distributions are not organized in the same way. But this is an interesting information that NGOs will then be able to look at to better ensure the access to soap of refugees.
So to give you an example of a field project uh, that we might run, um, a couple of months ago uh, we were called on to intervene in the Rohingya crisis. So as you might know, there's been, there was a, a year ago, uh, end of 2017, a massive influx of Rohingyas into Bangladesh and all of them, or a number of them are regrouped, 800,000 of them are regrouped uh, in uh, uh, different refugee camps, um, the main one being Coutupalon. Uh, and these WASH surveys uh, were run in the camp. And uh, normally all we do is make available the tools, documentation, and sometimes train survey managers so that they can actually go and collect the data and then analyze the data for themselves. But as it was a particularly big operation, uh, for once we were deployed to not only run the training, but also to help coordinate the field uh, data collection. So there were four different NGOs who were uh, supporting UNHCR in the process of the data collection with a survey manager for, for each and 500, uh, sorry, 50 enumerators who were there to collect the data during a five-day period. And uh, we set up the tools for the Rohingya context. So what was uh, great was that thanks to the mobile technology, we were able uh, every day, every evening, to transfer the data and actually check the data's real reliability and quality and uh, cross-check the different results per camp or per NGO collecting the data to make sure that questions had been properly understood. And the ge geographic dimension uh, was very important for this as we had a sample methodology where we could actually visualize where uh, the enumerators were supposed to go to collect the data as it was um, without going into too much detail, a methodology where we identified a certain number of points to which um, uh, the data collection, in which the data collection had to occur to ensure that the data, even though it was only 500 households that, was, that were surveyed, that it represented the whole of the Rohingya camp. Therefore, we were able to compare where they were supposed to do the data collection and also where it actually occurred. Sometimes there could be logistical constraints, which meant that refugees uh, were difficult to, to access. Uh, but this helped give us a good overview every evening of how the data collection had, had gone, because we were only able to follow two or three teams per day. The, the camp is so huge.